Coming up on ATV News, after seven years, American University has a new president coming all the way from James Madison University. And registration for on-campus housing and classes has begun. All this and more coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Jane Caroline Fusco. And I'm Sam McCarchek. Thanks for joining us. The current American University president, Sylvia Burwell, is stepping down as we welcome Jonathan Alger as our new university leader. Bea Barbosa has the story. American University students have mixed emotions about incoming president Jonathan Alger. I didn't even know that they were changing the, the president this year. Nothing is really going to, I feel like, change with it. It's just going to like be the same, same thing, different person, you know? While some students are indifferent about the new president, senior Tyler Davis says he's optimistic about Alger. So I had Jonathan Alger as my president uh, at James Madison before I transferred here, and I thought he did a great job. And to be honest with you, I'm really excited about what I think he's going to do yeah. for the school. Sophomore Adina Schwartz says she has some concerns about the new president. I've heard that he's pretty conservative, um, you know, Christian white male, which is not, you know, the typical demographic that I think the AU student body really wants. So I'm hesitant about that. Frida Gutierrez, a junior, says she feels good about Alger's ability to lead at AU, given his 30 years of experience in higher education. I mean, I looked at his credentials and he seems like he's qualified. Students say they hope Alger brings some changes with him. I would really like to see AU be a school with more school spirit, and uh, I think he's the kind of guy that can make that happen. As a CAS student, I am hoping he, I don't know, maybe brings more funding to CAS um, and more support for science research. Alger will take over in July when current president Sylvia Burwell is set to step down. For ATV News, I'm Bea Barbosa. American University students have mixed emotions about the start of class and housing registration for next fall. ATV Charlotte Beckert reports. Housing and class registration for the summer and fall 2024 semesters is open for AU students. Sign-ups for housing started on March 20th and classes on March 25th. For students such as Maddie Winars, their class registration has been going well, but they're a little upset with how their housing has turned out. I had a pretty early time slot, but I still wasn't really able to get much. I wound up in McDowell, which that's fine. It's getting renovated. I'm not too pissed about it. But you know, I was hoping there would be something on East Campus or Cassell and, oh well. While wait lists are a common occurrence when applying for classes, Aiden Dowell points out it can be a pain. Just immediately everything had a wait list. Um, couldn't get into anything else. Couldn't take anything else for my major. And I had to be on, I like maxed out wait lists. Um, and every day it was like, wake up, coffee, check wait list, go to class, check wait list. Sarah Metcalf, a student worker at the SOC advising office, gives some helpful advice. Right, I would definitely say be proactive. Um, don't wait until the last minute to essentially um, like, stress yourself out because advisors have so many people under them. They have hundreds of students. Be sure to check your email for registration time and day and meet with your advisor if you have any questions sooner rather than later. I'm Charlotte Becker for ATV News. Some AU students say they're hesitant about registering for on-campus housing due to the discovery of some rodents in the freshman dorms. Ellie Knudsen has the story. From East Campus to McDowell, many AU students have chosen to call on-campus residences home for years. However, for freshmen in Letts Hall, it seems that students are not the only residents in the complex. Because according to Two Fix, they say it's supposed to be mice, not rats, so technically I'm seeing rats, but I've seen mice multiple times, yes. And then in my own room, I had seen a mouse. Um, right before like winter break like literally the day before definitely at least since like like in this year I think that it, we mostly started seeing issues when it got colder the mice problem which has allegedly been pervading the walls of Letts since the beginning of the academic year seems to have also carried over to neighboring resident hall Anderson Anderson resident Sarah Quigg said she's seen a number of mice on her floor mice. but yes I have seen um, at least six mice on my floor 
I know that for some people it's been a problem since the beginning of first semester, but for my floor specifically, we only had a problem starting right after winter break when some people did not take their food out of their dorms. Despite calls being made to two fix to try and resolve this problem, residents continue to report seeing mice in the halls. For the time being, residents are resigned to sharing their space with the furry guests. Still, they hope the university will start taking the matter more seriously. Like, um, they need to do better about the issue because we're paying money for these dorms. Invest in some like anti-mice infrastructure, please. For ATV News, I'm Ellie Knudsen. Students interested in choosing the next student government leaders voted online this past week. Candidates were required to send out forms and collect signatures in order to get their names on the ballot. Current Vice President Arusa Islam is one of two candidates running for president in hopes of giving a voice to the students. I realized that being the role of vice president, it didn't really have the advocacy role that I really wanted to have on campus. Yes, I had the role of representing the students, but I think running for president, I just really wanted to be the chief advocacy officer. The results of the election will be announced later today. Be sure to check out the AUSG social media accounts or their website for more information about our newly elected officials. Phase two of construction of our on-campus dining hall, TDR, begins on Monday, April 1st. TDR will be closing the entirety of its underground space for the rest of the semester. The new dining area will be based in room 128 on the first floor of the Mary Graydon Center. TDR's regular operating hours will not change to maintain consistency and accessibility for everyone on campus. For those of you who are big breakfast fans, specifically of the popular TDR omelets, do not fret. Omelets and breakfast sandwiches will be available at True Burger with the goal of streamlining the process and reduced wait times. Just like every other True Burger meal, the additional breakfast options can be ordered from the Grubhub app or kiosks and through regular payment methods at the cashier. Additional tables and chairs will be brought up and rearranged around the first floor of MGC to accommodate the regular number of students and other customers partaking in TDR's services. AU Dining is also encouraging students to go to to use the Aussie Green to-go containers to compensate for the limited dining and dishwashing space. While TDR is undergoing its full renovation, they will be transitioning to compostable serviceware as well for students who plan on returning next year. You can expect a new dining experience in the improved Terrence Dining Room by the start of fall 24 semester. After months of hard work, AU in Motion hosted the final showcase of the semester last weekend. At Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School, more than 200 members showed their love for dance with 36 unique dances in hip hop, contemporary, jazz, tap, and more. Their showcase was also the first to have a Brazilian funk piece choreographed by Michaela White, as well as having multiple tap pieces and heel dances. And as always, tickets were sold out quickly. Students say all of the success was made possible by the environment AU in Motion brings. The preparation is just like a really fun process where we all just get to cheer each other on, support each other while we're rehearsing, and all the choreographers and all the dancers are just so, so supportive, and it's just such a fun, loving environment. Coming up, AU students are dancing among the stars, fundraising and helping children in need at Eaglethon. Also, American University is hiring a consultant group. All this and more after the break. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Welcome back to ATV News. If you're interested in attending a giant party and raising money for a meaningful cause, Eaglethon may just be the event for you. 
be ready to get your groove on at this year's Eaglethon. That's right, AU's own eight-hour dance marathon is just a few days away on April 6th from noon to 8 p.m. in the Butler boardroom. It's going to be such a blast that you'll be going all the way to space as this year's theme is out of this world. Eaglethon is also AU's largest student-run philanthropy that raises money for Children's National Hospital, the local D.C. Children's Hospital just a few miles from our campus. A lot of our fundraising goes to these awesome activities and events for them and things like there's a this little garden outside and other sort of measures to help them feel like actual kids because when you're stuck in the hospital all the time, you kind of lose that sense of childhood and the whole idea is that they're able to feel at home and um, cared for. During the main event, there will be various activities, including student group performances and a life-size version of Hungry Hungry Hippos, where you will have to work as a team gathering planets while on scooters. To help fundraise, there will also be a raffle with over 23 prizes, ranging from restaurant gift cards to ones for fitness programs and various stores. Some of our big highlights are we're raffling off a TV this year, which is going to be awesome, um, especially if you want one in your dorm and don't want to pay for it. Uh, that's my personal favorite. The event has a $15 sign-up fee, which goes straight to the Children's Hospital and includes entry and re-entry throughout the day with snacks and beverages, including ones from their sponsor, Celsius. You don't want to miss out on this perfect opportunity to dance among the stars while helping children in need. For ATV News, I'm Sam McCartcheck. If you can't make it to Eagle Thong on the 6th, don't worry. You can still make tax-deductible tax donations to help them reach their goal of $45,000 by following their Instagram at AUEagleThon for more information. Nearly every year, the cost of AU continues to rise. Administration announced tuition will increase by 4% entering the 2024-25 fiscal year. Increases in tuition aim to cover recent renovations across campus as well as inflation. Annual financial aid is set to rise nearly 5% alongside tuition. While the tuition increase is lower than recent years, some students say they think AU is too expensive. Uh, I think it's a little overpriced, especially if they're raising it. I've heard that they say it's like comparable to competitors, but it really feels like it's unjustly expensive. Administration is working to approve next year's budget, and the finalized report is expected to be released in April. AU's chapters of Students for Justice in Palestine held a die-in last week as part of its annual Palestine Liberation Week. Members of the organization spent hours on the ground outside the Mary Graydon Center holding signs, calling on students to speak about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Leaders of the organization took turns reading off the names and ages of children who have died in Gaza since October 7th. A newly hired consulting group causes concern between AU unions and AU administration. Ashley Totten has the story. A coalition of American university unions are calling for the university to provide information about the hiring of the Huron Consulting Group. AU hired the Huron Consulting Group to do an assessment of the university. According to a statement released by AU in December, Huron will prepare findings and recommendations that will, along with other ongoing assessments, inform our future strategy and budget planning. The statement also says the workforce may be impacted by the results. The unions are concerned about the Huron Consulting Group's reputation. Other universities had extensive layoffs after hiring the Huron Consulting Group. AU has already laid off four staff members because of a reorganization. A coalition made up of AU professors, staff, and students wishes for more transparency from the university. Having the opportunity to ask questions to the administration and get responses that are real responses about what they're doing with Huron, how much Huron cost the university, um, whether uh, Huron Consulting Group was hired with the express purpose of rearranging and laying people off, uh, or like doing reorganizations and laying people off, what the plan is going forward, what they're going to do with the data that Huron Consulting Group gathered. Um, and whether the layoffs that we've already seen happening on campus are a result of the Huron Consulting Group's uh, recommendations. The coalition hopes for more collaboration between the unions and the AU administration. Ashley Totten, ATV News. The class of 2024 is getting ready for the end of the year. Between submitting capstone projects and figuring out your plans for graduations, things can get hectic. Let's take a look at some important upcoming dates. 
April 1st is the last day to request on-campus pickup for regalia and to record your name for the ceremony. April 3rd is the last day to verify your name for your diploma, and April 12th is when the marching order is released and graduates can pick up their tickets. In just over four weeks, the class of 2024 will be walking down the aisle, so make sure to get your plans in order. The DC cherry blossoms are now in peak bloom and tourists and residents alike are thrilled. ATV's Julian Sheehan reports. American University is only steps away from the busy streets of DC. Despite the occasional noise, students are finding peace on campus amid peak bloom. It is so much nicer playing outside. Um, even if you know you, other people can't hear, you can't hear it as well. It's nice to sit and just like, sunbathe pretty much. Campus is booming as spring approaches. From the quad to Woodsgate, there are many spots students go to enjoy the weather. Super nice here. A lot of people come here all the time to hang out and just talk. AU's campus is open to more than just students and faculty. DC residents often use the space to spend time in nature. American University is a great place for me where I used to come and enjoy, you know, doing my hobby like playing soccer and also running around. If you're looking to get off campus, the district has plenty to offer. For kind of my opinion, like if you really want nature, you need to go off campus for that because we got like plenty of parks around here. We got Rock Creek, we have Battery Kimball right over there, Glover Park somewhere around here. It's a, it's a good city for nature. Whether you want to sunbathe or meet a four-legged friend, there are plenty of ways to enjoy peak bloom and the rest of spring semester. For ATV News, Julianne Sheehan. Have you been to the Tidal Basin to see the cherry blossoms yet? Unfortunately, I have not, but I've seen the lovely cherry blossoms around campus. I saw them last week at the Tidal Basin, and they're beautiful, and I'm going to miss them for sure. For well, sure. that's all we have for today. I'm Jane Caroline Fusco. And I'm Sam McCarchick. We'll see you soon for our last broadcast of the semester.